let's plan out and talk about fall favorite meals. Hello everyone, it's Alana. I'm so glad you came to hang out with me today. We are going to be doing another fun fall junk journal spread in my fall junk journal today, but we are going to be talking about and planning out my fall favorite meals. Cooking and baking in the fall and winter is one of my absolute favorite things to do. I love cooking year round, but there is something so special and magical about cooking when the leaves are turning color outside and it's chilly and you're inside and cozy and the smells and ugh, I love talking about food as almost as much as I love eating it. <laughs> So I printed a couple of photos that I thought would look cute on this spread, and we're going to do a few stickers and some scrapbook paper, but then I'm mostly going to just fill it out, write down my fall favorite meals to cook for my family and myself, and I'll chat with you guys just a little bit about them. There's 20 of them, so I'm not really going to be able to, you know, give you a recipe for every single one, but they're mostly fairly fairly common, well-known, and quite simple to make. And really quick, before we get started on that, I'm just going to flip back and show y'all the page that I did without filming it. I said in my previous fall junk journal videos, I would always come back and show you what I did if I did anything without making a video. And I did this one letter to September spread. I still don't know entirely how I feel about it. There's a lot going on. It's a lot of paper. I started with this page. Excuse me, I'm losing my voice. I started with this page and I was really happy with it. I thought it was really pretty. And then I went over here and went kind of wild with the old magazine articles. But it's still, it's really fun. It's really pretty. And I glued down this envelope so I could just write a little letter or a note or some memories to look back on and maybe print some photos of our family adventures to poke in there as well. But now let's go ahead and get started on the fall meal spread. I'm going to go ahead and clip down these pages. This is already getting kind of chunky and crinkly, and I love it. I love it so much. This is going to be so full when I'm all done with it, but it's going to make for a little bit of a challenge while doing the spreads. But no big deal. I think I'm going to get started by putting my photos down in the corner here, um, or maybe one like this and one, I'm not sure. I do know that I want to have a lot of black and white in this spread with little pops of orange. So maybe what I'll do is get some black and white dotted scrapbook paper and tear it for right here to put this photo. And then maybe I'll do something up here with this one. Okay, I tore my scrapbook paper. I'm gonna, I want it to hang over so that I can trim it to match the rounded edges. Um, and then of course I need to trim the border off of this photo, but I think this is gonna look really cute. So gluing down my scrapbook paper to start with, and then let's see if I can get the backing off of this photo. There we go. So these photos I just found on Pinterest and I think I just searched autumn aesthetic and there's so many, so many to choose from. There's so many great photographers out there just sharing their artwork. Of course, it's just for personal use. Don't take their artwork. I don't have to tell you that. You already know that, <laughs> but you know what I mean. So I just printed them on some Kodak uh, Kodak Smile like sticker printer paper. You could just print them regularly straight from your at-home printer and glue them down as well. So that's really cute. I'm very, very happy with that. Now up here I have this sticker that says favorite with the leaves. I think I want to do something like this and put it up here. Um, let's see, just like that. That's cute. I'm happy with that. I am going to put some more decorative up here though and pull it all together. I think I want to do some of this 
like postage stamp washi kind of like this and maybe do some fall like leaf stickers or food stickers so I'm gonna grab of course my absolute favorite seasonal sticker pack I always have passion planner linked down below and you guys I'm gonna quickly run out of these look there's not that much left because it's so dang cute so precious but there are luckily some food stickers still left on here so hmm this is really cute this loaf of like what is that raisin bread or pumpkin chocolate chip I don't know but I'm gonna use that one and let's see I love the tea kettle one. Oh, I love this one little gourds I think I'm gonna put these little acorns beside the bread just like that I think I'm gonna do some of this brown grid washi on here as well like this and let's see go like that and I think I'm gonna do this little mushroom and the pine cone down here y'all this came together so quickly so fast I'm very pleased with it so I'm going to do just the washi in opposite corners I think but I don't know we'll see I might not want to leave it at all I might just want these two opposite ends but I'm gonna try it just to see how it looks and for the grid washi I'm just ripping it down the center that's what I'm doing for this one as well but just in case you were wondering because I don't think I showed you how I did it the first time Y'all, I think I do like that very, very much. So now what I'm going to do is go ahead and write out all of my favorite meals to make for my family in the fall, and then I will come back and we will chat about them just really quick. And there she is, all filled in. It's a good thing I stopped when I did with my decorations because I just had enough space to write out our favorites. And there they are, all listed out, my favorite, mostly comfort food meals to cook for my family in the fall. So over here, we've got lasagna, salad, and garlic bread, loaded baked potato soup, pot roast, and mashed potatoes. Y'all, Mississippi mud roast is the greatest thing that was ever invented. So easy to make. If you haven't done it, if you're making a regular old pot roast, I highly, highly recommend that you give the Mississippi Mud Roast a try. Not my recipe. Someone clearly more genius than me <laughs> came up with it, but you just throw a pot roast in your crock pot with a can of French onion soup, a packet of ranch dressing powder, a not a whole bottle, as much as you desire, I guess, um, of pepperoncinis and a stick of butter. And then you just leave it to become this amazing, melt-in-your-mouth, most incredible pot roast you will ever eat. That is, of course, if you like pot roast. If you despise pot roast, then no matter what, you're not going <laughs> to like it. But in this household, we love pot roast, and I will never, ever go back to the original way of making it. Of course, I throw in some, like, salt and pepper and garlic powder as well, um, but just doing it that way, so simple, so amazing. The next one, creamy tortellini soup and salad. This is something that I kind of made up myself. It's a recipe that I came up with, but I don't know if anybody else has ever tried it before. I wanted to make something comfy and cozy and warm for my family when our kiddos were really tiny and I was on a super tight budget. So in my grocery shopping, I grabbed a family size can of 
just tomato soup, not even Campbell's. I got the generic grocery store brand of tomato soup, the, the large family size can though. And then I got a pack of those, I think it's Bortoli is the brand of the cheese tortellinis. They're like already made, already stuffed with cheese. You just boil them for a couple of minutes until they're fully cooked. So I did that. I threw them in with the can of tomato soup and then I just poured a little bit of heavy whipping cream in it to make it a little bit more creamy and then I made a small side salad and it has become one of our favorite fall meals. It's so easy. It makes you seem fancy like, oh, you made a bisque with tortellini. It's just, it's just soup and tortellini, but it's so good. Then homemade hamburger helper. Again, our fa- we don't really like the box homemade hamburger helper. There's just some not great things going on there. But my kiddos like that kind of thing with the macaroni and the ground beef and the seasonings. So I just took it upon myself to figure out how to make it from scratch. There's tons of different recipes available on the internet for how you can make it for your taste. Um, but we do it just kind of like with elbow macaroni, the ground beef, a bunch of seasonings. Um, I do a can, the small, tiny can of tomato paste and some, like the oregano and that kind of spices, and then water, of course, to boil the noodles. Put it all together, and you've got a better version of Hamburger Helper. Next is white chili, white chicken chili and cornbread. Um, it's basically like like a chili, except you do chicken instead, and some cream sauce and some peppers and some roasted green chilies all in a crock pot. Next is cabbage rolls. I love cabbage rolls. This is one of my absolute favorite things and my family tolerates it. (laughs) They're not huge fans of cabbage rolls, but I love them so much. It's something that my nan and I made together when I was a kid a lot, so it's all about the nostalgia for me. Then cream of broccoli or mushroom soup. My family and I like both, and I like to make both from scratch. Uh, To make it a little extra special, I'll sometimes grab the little sourdough bread bowls from the bakery and put our soup in our bread bowl. Next is probably my favorite thing on this list. Not because it's my favorite meal to eat or to cook, but because it's memories and it's literally called happy belly bowls because my kids when they were tiny had no idea what it actually was so they started calling it happy belly bowls again when my kiddos were tiny i was on a super tight budget for groceries and they were watching i want to say phineas and verb and an ad came on for kfc kentucky fried chicken came out with these like mashed potato bowls it had mashed potatoes it had popcorn chicken it had i don't know if it had corn it could have been just the mashed potatoes the chicken and gravy but i decided that i was going to learn how to make it because they wanted it so bad they asked if we could go to kfc to get it but we just went to the grocery store and i got the stuff and we did mashed potatoes chopped up breaded chicken tenders a can of sweet corn sprinkled some cheese on top and then poured gravy over it and they loved it so much and it has since also become one of our favorite meals to eat Now onto this side, we've got just regular traditional chili, and then I like to make spicy cheddar cornbread muffins to go along with it. Oh, I love them so, so much. Then chicken salad sandwiches on homemade bread. I make little like homemade, um, what are they called? Like sub sandwich rolls, and we make chicken salad sandwiches on those. And I'll tell you my secret, you guys, for the best chicken salad sandwiches half your mayo with cream cheese. So good. They're so good. Sheep pan sausage and veggies. Super simple. Um, You just get some kielbasa and whatever veggies you like and roast the whole thing in the oven. Crock pot crack chicken veggies and dip. This one we do kind of like for a Friday night, like family movie night treat thing. I see this, this this is a popular recipe that kind of got its fame on Pinterest way before there was TikTok or anything like that. Um, but 
some people like use this as a meal and this to me is more of a treat. It's like shredded pre-cooked chicken breast, cheese, bacon, a packet of ranch dressing, um, bacon. There's just, there's a lot of stuff in it. It's a lot of fun, but I would not do it as a meal. So I do it for like family fun movie night. We'll do this with like some crackers or some little bread to use it as a dip. And then we'll do also veggie, raw veggies and dip with it. Homemade pizzas, that's pretty straightforward. Chicken and dumplings, also a very common recipe. Chicken taco soup. Again, y'all, I started doing this when I was on a very tight budget. It, I just pre-cooked some chicken. I shredded it. I did the family-sized can of tomato soup, a packet of taco seasoning, a couple of splops of salsa, and then you just let it turn into a soup. And I, when I bowl it up, I do like chopped avocado or chopped onions or crushed chips and cheese on top, just whatever we have on hand. It's super simple and the kids love it. These next two you may recognize as breakfast items, but in our family, in the fall, we love to have breakfast for dinner. It's so much fun. These are still really great, of course, breakfast meals, but they're really fun if you want to do breakfast for dinner and have something that's different that's not just like sausage and eggs and toast or that kind of thing. So biscuits and gravy, super straightforward. Hash brown casserole, one of our favorites. You just do the frozen frozen hash browns, um, some heavy whipping cream, salt, pepper, cheese, and then I like to chop up some of the maple syrup sausage and cook it in there as well. Chicken pot pies, super simple, firecracker, meatballs, and rice. Firecracker meatballs, you guys, are amazing. They have grape jelly in them. What? So it's a crock pot meal. You can either do frozen meatballs or your own homemade meatballs. I like to make my own homemade meatballs. You get a ton more for sometimes even cheaper than the bag of frozen. Then you throw them in the crock pot with some grape jelly, some Louisiana hot sauce, some crushed red pepper, and sometimes, depending on if I want them um, a little bit sweeter or not so spicy, I will throw barbecue sauce in there as well. You just let them simmer, stay warm in your crock pot just until the sauce gets kind of gooey because I've, you know, you've pre-cooked your meatballs. Um, or if they're frozen, then leave them in there longer, obviously. But let the sauce get all sticky and gooey, and then we just pour it over steamed white rice. And there you have it. Those are our fall favorite meals. If you want to know more about these or if you're looking for a recipe, I can try to help you out. I honestly don't use recipes anymore. I just kind of throw things together. But if you have more questions, totally leave them down in the comments below. But more than anything, I would love it if you shared yours and your family's favorite fall meals with us down in the comments so we can all read them and enjoy them and maybe learn about some new foods from you. This one was quick and fun, you guys. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. That's all for this one. I will see you in my next one. Tell your dog I said hi. Bye, guys.